Since the start of his film career 25 years ago, Harvey Keitel has been one of America's most electrifying actors, starting with Marty Scorsese's In Mean Streets and Taxi Driver through The Bad Lieutenant and Bugsy. He has become known as a great risk taker among his generation of actors with performances that sometimes seem to be etched in acid. He has now created a portrayal that is being called one of the most surprising and finest of his career as Holly Hunter's lover and Jane Champion's acclaimed The Piano, and we're very pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank it's you, great John. to have you here, as you know, because we've wanted to do this for a while. Are you surprised? I mean, tell me about the piano and, and, and what this experience meant for you and the reaction to it and all the buzz about this film, the honors that it's already received and clearly the ones that it will continue to receive. Mm. I could speak for the next 20 minutes about it. I know. But it, it, well, what comes to mind immediately is this extraordinary uh, uh, person whom I've described as a goddess, yeah, Jane, Jane Champion. Jane Campion. I'm Campion, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, this this film was a particular moment in my life that I, I felt had to happen. It attracted me and I attracted it. It happened on The Last Temptation of Christ. Mm. It happened on Reservoir Dogs, in which a certain group of people came together and something dynamic happened that is inexplicable. What one has is an experience so rich that I don't have the words to uh, to uh, describe it. Um, Jane, <laughs> uh, when I described her as a goddess, I've said uh, um, uh, also she's uh, very mischievous, which goddesses can be, I learned from her. Yes. Uh, she's an extraordinary woman, an extraordinary yes. dynamic. Uh, her sensitivity, her, uh, her insight, her courage to go under the water, to use metaphorically the scene from the film, to go into the darkness yeah. of the water, of the ocean, in order to find in this movie life by, by, uh, by risking death. Um, her main character, played by Holly Hunter brilliantly, finds the light, finds air, finds all life-sustaining elements you got because to go into of the darkness to find the light. Because of the courage yeah. to go into that, into the depths of the ocean. Is that some way a metaphor for your life, you think? You know, I, I, um, I just feel very fortunate to be where I am as a human being. How it all evolved, I couldn't tell you. All I know is it has uh, brought me to where I am now, the, uh, the person I am now. And... Um, uh, back in my mind, I, I, I will tell you, uh, uh, is an event that occurred back when I was 17 years old. I've spoke about this bef yes. before. When I was um, a Marine private on Paris Island. And, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. This was in night combat training after yes. Paris Island. And um, we were sitting in the darkness, me and uh, hundreds of other Marines, about to uh, go through a course on night combat. And I was scared. And I didn't want to tell any of my fellow Marines I was scared, but I was scared. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. We sit down. This uh, Marine instructor gets up there in the darkness, couldn't even see him. And he said to us, you're all afraid of the darkness because we're all afraid of what we don't know. I'm going to teach you about the darkness so that you learn how to live in it. For me, that was the first time I had, I had heard words like that. Yeah. First time you'd heard wisdom, so to speak. Wisdom, coming from this young Marine. Uh, I was 17 then. To, he was probably an old man of, God knows, maybe 24 or 5. And um, um, so that was my introduction into the mythology. And it has seems to, to read, and I wanted to get to this later. Let me stay with the movie because I want to come back to that because it is fascinating to me, as I told you before we started, the notion of darkness and the notion of finding out who you are and the notion of exploring your own fears and the notion of taking risk and going where you don't know where the end's going to take you, all of that, going around corners and you don't know what's there, which seemed to have marked your career. But piano, did, what did you learn from her, uh, the goddess in Campion, about relationships about men and women I mean did what came out of this experience for you I can't say for the first time but for the one but for one of the only times that I am aware of here was a woman 
having the courage to explore what is usually reserved for men yeah. to make stories about, a man between two women. Here we have a woman. We're examining her sexual desires, her needs, her sensuality. This is a Holly Hunter character. Holly Hunter character. Mm -hmm. Well, as a man, I can't tell you what a relief. I don't know about you, Charlie, but I'm tired of the burden. Yes, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> right. How wonderful to have a woman come forward. Yeah. Uh, that we have these thoughts, we have these feelings. Yeah, I, I, it seems to me, go ahead. Yes, I was going to say because we are living under the yoke of interpretations of the Genesis story that began yeah. thousands of years ago by men. I say we need some more influence of women into our lives so we can live better. We haven't been doing such a great job under the cultural institutions that we have thus far. We're doing well, we're here, but yeah. we can do better. We can do better with women like Jane Campion coming forward with the courage to uh, express her own inner story. Why do you think this movie, other than the fact that it's well made and it's all certainly between you and Holly and Sam Neill, well acted, has struck such a chord? I mean, it's won awards. What is it you think? First of all, I think it's, uh, uh, I can't just dismiss, aside from the fact it's well made. Yeah. It's like looking at a Van Gogh, I mean, yeah. painting. It's more than well made. It's extraordinarily created. In addition to that, there's the story of a woman whose needs are not being met in the Christian world of that time. And she does something about it. I think that's why it's being well received, for those elements I just Does described. something about it at some risk to herself and on a journey she's never taken before. The only way to do anything about anything has to involve risk. If there is no risk, you can forget about it. Just forget about it. Suck your thumb and sit home. To evolve demands risk. There's another favorite little story of mine. Do I have time to sure, uh, say? Uh, in, we got uh, time. Mm, um, somewhere in uh, Dante's Inferno, uh, Dante describes himself as standing next to Virgil, looking over these obstacles he must overcome to get from here to there. And the path is strewn with these perils, these hideous monsters um, threatening Dante. And uh, he gulps because they're about to go from here to there. And he looks at Virgil and says, um, because he was trembling inside, and he didn't want to uh, let on to Virgil that he was trembling. And he says to Virgil, gulping, um, are you sure we can get from here to there? Because Dante didn't want to go. And Virgil replies to him, the only answer that I give you is in the doing. A just request is best met in silence by the deed. In, in those few lines, <clears throat> Um, is encompassed all the uh, wisdom I have read in, from people like Joseph Campbell and, and Nietzsche and uh, various other uh, uh, um, Goethe, great men that I've, uh, and women that I've had the privilege to, uh, to read. There's a risk in involved if you want to evolve, if you hope to evolve. Where did this interest in myth begin for you? I couldn't answer that. Um, my mind went immediately to that young marine on, yeah, on, uh, uh, in North Carolina. Um, when you all of a sudden heard somebody speaking to you. Yes. I, I, it didn't quite register them, by the way, but I remembered it all these years. So obviously, it began to permeate my being in some fashion because I remembered it all those years. Um, you mentioned that that there have been pivotal moments in your own career in which films have made a difference, open up new opportunities, have been op an opening for you. Uh, Last Temptation of Christ yes. came along at a certain time in your life where I, I assume right after uh, a period in which you, I don't know, what period at that time? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> this, what does this do? What does this change? What, how do you feel that that might be a, a move, a new direction for you? Do you? What? You mean career-wise, yeah, or you or mean, just as, as frankly, frankly, I don't think career-wise. I'm thinking as a human being. As a human being, then. Well, uh, um, I believe there is randomness in the world, by the way. Yeah. 
But I don't believe that this event occurred out of a random quality. I think I attracted piano, and uh, Jane attracted me. Um, and so I was um, put into this place where I had to take a look at being alone, the elements of the character, at being alone, at uh, not having a woman, uh, what that was like and why I didn't have one, why I wanted one, why I needed one. And not only that, but to stop being a manipulator, to give back the scene we just saw that Jane wrote. I'm speaking about her writing. To stop being a manipulator, for one to volunteer, to give oneself a gift and say, I'm not going to be a manipulator. If I need to be alone, I'm going to suffer the fear of being alone. Take back your piano, I will never see you again, because I know you want your piano and not me. That takes a great deal of courage for a human being. I could almost say it's been a lifetime journey for myself. And here Jane Campion was opening the door for me to enter. And we did together. I said this to you before we started, and I won't explore it now. The notion of, I was struck by your own, in reading a lot about you before this conversation, uh, yesterday and this morning, uh, this journey, this exploration, this constant sense of being able to descend into the darkness where you don't know what the next move, and you mentioned. You said to me, you're struck by how few people do that, and especially people who've had a superior education, who've had much more education. Yes. Well, you know, um, um, therein lies the rub, in a, in a sense. I'm not well educated. Uh, I left school when I was 16. Um, I hardly joined the Marines. Joined the Marines. I had hardly read a book up until that time. I didn't begin my reading until in the Marine Corps, and one of the first books I read was on mythology. Interestingly enough, um, people like myself from a um, lower middle class have a tendency to worship people from the upper middle class, upper class. And I'm speaking in terms of education, not only wealth, although wealth for the underclass is something to, uh, to worship. So yes, I was surprised. Um, as I began to educate myself into these, um, this mythology, this, this journey, this necessary journey on the razor's edge in order to, um, uh, be, to evolve, I was surprised about the reaction from a lot of uh, well-educated uh, people like yourself, you know. Um, um, uh, who were struck by it, who, who was nearly were drawn to your journey yes. as something that yes. was <clears throat> fulfilling for you. Yes, and, and it just, um, let me on, enter upon a new area here, which right. I have not thought about, but your question is prompting me, so I, I might stutter a bit here, but let me, let me try. Um, we, we the people, have to um, take more responsibility for what exists in our social structures. We cannot abdicate responsibility by turning it over to the formally educated. All the wisdom is not necessarily the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the land, the playground of the superior, to, to use your word, educated. Experience could perhaps be the best educator. I'm reminded um, uh, um, politics now seems to me to have center stage in everything. It seems to me to be a circus. The world revolves around politics. I was caught up in it myself, watching these political debates all the time, this yeah. and that, and hemming and hawing back and forth. And I, I said to myself, who is behind all the wars that are going on today? Behind all the killing, maiming, burning of poverty that's being committed today? People who, was, who have a superior education, yeah. formally that is, right. formally. And I said to myself, if politics is the business of the people, then theater must be the soul of the people. And enough with politics. I might like to see Bill Clinton and the, uh, the, uh, the leaders of the nations uh, involved in the war in Bosnia get up and do a piece from a play rather than talk so much about peace. And that experience of the theater, that experience of being, 
perhaps is the area we really have to go, not up, but in. And what do you think they would get out of it? What would be the experience for them, for us, whoever? The courage to say, I did inhale. Yeah. The courage to face. What is relevant? What is really relevant in your experience as a human being? I mean, what is, what is one supposed to say, you know? I was in Sarajevo recently with Vanessa Redgrave um, through uh, the auspices of the uh, UN. And um, uh, uh, I'm there and I'm looking around, I'm saying, my God, we went to every community, uh, Muslim, Serbian, Croatian, Jewish. Well, the members of these communities want to be together. They want to be together. And they want the same Things. They want the same Family, things. Family, food, That's right. shelter, job. Communication mm -hmm. to create. They want the same things. Who is hurling the bullets and the bombs? The leaders of the nations are ordering this to be done. So you ask me what experience might they have? One other than the ability to say, fire! Has acting for you been you know, an, ex an exploration into self? Totally. There's no other reason to, to, uh, to be, be an actor. But may I come back for a moment sure. to what we were talking yeah. about? Because I'm a little concerned that I'm sounding like everyone else that's ever appeared and talked about the, uh, the uh, subject. I mean it when I say I'd rather see them create a scene from some great play, do some great theater. They might have an experience there that might bring them closer to some reality that might, that might make them more hospitable to one another. Instead of worshiping their local gods and saying, I'm a Serb and you're a Croat and you're a Muslim, instead of worshiping their, 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 their local gods, they might discover that there is one creator and one God, and therefore we all do have something in common. But I think as long as they talk, as long as they one another, they will go no further than they have gone already. I'm, and I'm saying this pointedly, in the experience of, of trying to get along together, in the experience, and theater provides an experience. Creation provides an experience that is at best, at its best, unspeakable. I'm reminded of one of the prophets, which I researched when we did The Last Temptation of Christ, either Jeremiah or Isaiah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant minds who exclaimed at one point uh, in his writings, I don't have the words to express my experience. I think it's that experience that I'm talking about. In the experience, something else would happen if they, ex if they experienced it. I think if I hear you correctly. No, you are. But let me tell you, see <laughs> if, if, if I'm hearing you correctly. Yes. It, and that's what art does. Yes. Art is in yes. the capacity of an artist to say, through his or her art, the experience that others feel. Yes. Yes. Can sh show the common experience. The common elements that bind us. Right. The common universe we all come from, that we're all made of star stuff. Listen, uh, I'm, no, sorry. I'm sorry again, Charlie. No, you go ahead. Uh, I say this because I come from the other side. As a young Marine, I was more than willing to kill for my country and die for my country. Mm. And at times, I believe that's very worthwhile to stand up for what you believe in. Back then, I was a young, ignorant, uh, ignorant young man. And, um, um, okay, let me stop there. No, don't stop mm. there, because I want to tell you. You yes. came, you, coming back on the boat from Lebanon, on the ship, is where you became, you introduced yourself to reading, where you began to... Yes. I, I, I recall somewhere in there, yes, I read this book on mythology, uh, on, on, on Greek gods. I don't know, I mean, today it's interesting to me that I came up with that yeah. book back then when I was 18 years old and 19. I don't know where I got the book from even, but... Uh, you don't want to talk about career, but I do, just for a second. Okay. Um, because you've made 45 films, <clears throat> or 46, I mean, I don't know, right, over 40 films. There are people, how many, do you know? No, all, that, all that really indicates is that uh, I didn't have leads, a lot of leads, <laughs> because right. if you do, you can't do that many films. 
there is somehow now people will look at you and there's a celebration of you. More people are writing about you and they're talking about you. And I get a sense you feel that too, that somehow there is an acceptance. Um, and when you look at wh what it took to get where you are now, any reservations, any regrets, any, you know, or do you look at that as the unfolding of a life? Um, and it, and you're just happy with it. If I can quote one of the one of the great talents that I admire, regrets I have a few. Um, Who was that? Frank Sinatra. Yeah, oh, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, no, everything that has occurred appears to me to be right. Everything that occurs, because everything that occurred has provided an opportunity for me to see whether I'm going to run this way or run that way. Um, luckily enough, I've chosen the path where I ran into myself and knocked myself over many times. But I got up. I had great friends along the way because you can't do it without support. Marty Scorsese, Robert De Niro, and many that I don't know. Many you don't know. Yeah. When you were being knocked down and when you had to pick yourself up and, and when you were uh, when you watched De Niro coming out of Mean Streets, when the both of you in Mean Streets, and began to, to with Marty, do Raging Bull and other things, uh, d d you obviously loved him and felt good about that happening to him. But d did you ever? What else did you feel as you locked, as you watched another actor about the same age as you, whose career was going like this? Um, I felt nothing other than what you've indicated. Uh, if I might just if you use some different words, um, I thought Robert was being the most that he could be. And it's my task to become the most that I can be. And you have. You're still on that journey, but that's... Ex I am... Uh, Charlie, you want me to say nice things about myself? Not, yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, but you feel that, don't you? Yes, I've certainly arrived from uh, some other place to where I am now, yes. yes. Um, we're out of time. I want to do this again. Um, as you oh. know, I've been trying to do it for a while. Yeah. Me and, too. And it's a pleasure to have you I've here. I've enjoyed your show, really. Thanks. Great, deal. Great to have you. Thank you. Harvey Cantel. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.